Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I'm doing some work on the GKD Mini Plus right now. And <clears throat> as I'd said in that previous short little video, there's some things that we got to talk about with this device. Do I think it's a nice device? I mean, yeah, it's got a metal shell and it's an RK3566. Of course, it's a nice device. But as I've been working on this device, I've come across some things internally that I don't like. When I put the SD card into my PC, it says Emuelic. When I'm going through some of the files making changes and customizing things, I'm seeing copyright from both Shanti Gilbert and Fute from JellOS. And then I'm doing some deeper digging into the files and things, and I'm finding Retro Run. Now, Retro Run was made by Crash Override for the Odroid Go Advance and Odroid Go Super. And outside of that stock Odroid OS, only Christian Haitian, who makes Arc OS, and myself, who make Retro Arena, obviously, use Retro Run. So what that says to me is that this stock OS for this device is Gel OS with things cherry-picked from Arc, Retro Arena, and from Emuelic. Now, I have a problem with that for obvious reasons. The first one being that we support almost any device. All it takes is a simple conversation and coming to us and saying, hey, we want you to uh, do a firmware for us and sending us a device. And generally, we will help. We don't turn down a lot of people. I know Christian's the same way as well. So what I'm getting at here is that there was absolutely no reason to do what has happened here. There's absolutely no reason they should have ever touched any of our firmwares without talking to us, especially because we're the people that made it and we understand how it works. That's why there's a lot of bugs and problems in the stock OS, because they took work that they didn't create, so they don't fully understand how it works. Now that we've got that out of the way, and I will touch base on that more and more as we go through things, but I wanted to show you guys the changes that I have personally made to the stock build. The first one is that we can launch RetroArch and RetroArch32 GUI directly from Emulation Station. Also, this is running the latest stock firmware build released in China yesterday. It's available on the or on my Google Drive. I'll put a link in the description. So I've added MSU One Mega Drive. Most of you that watch my videos will already know what's coming and why. If that happens to you when you're launching a Mega Drive game, you click the wrong file. It'll take a minute. Unfortunately, the naming scheme here is not the most intuitive. So it, it shows all the files. You can't see the... I, I found that I can tell, but... There's two or three files for the games, and it's going to show them all. So as you can see with MSU1, it's playing the actual music as opposed to only playing the 8-bit audio. For Sega Saturn, I recommend using the RetroArch32 Yabasan Shiro Core. I've had the best luck with that so far. The brightness isn't caused by the screen that you're seeing right now. It's caused because there's a storm kind of outside. It's going between gray and light sky, so the light's changing in the room. Give you guys a quick look at what's on here as I go through. I added Shy Love here. Most of you will already know what that is. Like Flappy Bird and some other stuff there. I added Coleco Super Game Module as well. This is using the... 
Cool CV Lib Retro Core, only it's not an official release. It was released privately by the Cool CV dev. You can find it on the Atari forums, basically. I'm not going to go through and do a super long gameplay of anything at the moment. I'm just showing you guys the changes. That's about it. And what is here, of course. I added Lutro. M player here will do the same thing it does on every other build. It plays your videos and movies for you. N64 has standalone Mup and or RetroArch. I added Philips CDI. This is using the same CDI core. So for the BIOS setup for that, you want to use the libretro settings. I added fake 08 core, which will do Pico 8. For PlayStation here, there's several different emulators you can choose from already included in the build. Standalone Duck Station, Swan Station, PSX Rearmed. I went in and I added the RetroArch version of Duck Station. This button here will give you the LibRetro menu. Start and select will exit. For the ports area here, I will be trying to get uh, Port Master to work. Maybe Theme Master. And that's about where we're at with this build right now. Just wanted to give you guys a, a quick look at what's going on and what's being worked on. However, as I stated, the idea that they've taken work from Feut and Shanti and Christian and myself and just kind of gone ahead and mashed everything together into one build without talking to any of us has honestly left a really bitter taste in my mouth. I'm honestly not sure what I should do with this here. I'm hoping maybe you guys can give me some feedback. How do you think I should proceed? Should I just ignore what they did to everybody and support the device normally? Should I just maybe touch up the stock OS and then walk away? Should I not really release anything for it? What do you guys think I should do? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thank you for watching as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.